Hello, my name is Steve Lieber. I'm president and CEO of HEMS. And today we have Michelle Troseth with us to talk about the Tiger Initiative. This is a program that's been a part of HEMS for a number of years. And over the course of the next few minutes, Michelle's going to tell us a little bit more about the startup of Tiger, what its objectives are, how well it's performing, and what the future holds for us as it relates to the Tiger Initiative. Michelle is the chief uh, professional practice officer mm -hmm. at Elsevier Clinical Solutions. She's also the recipient of the 2014 HIMSS Nursing Informatics Leadership Award. So, Michelle, thanks for being with us today, and let's thanks learn a little me. bit about Tiger, Tiger's history, and, and what we ought to know in terms of some background about this initiative. Absolutely. So, the Tiger Initiative was actually born in about 2005. And how it came to be was when um, President Bush declared 2004 the decade of healthcare technology um, and appointed uh, Dr. Brailer as the first uh, Owen Cesar. And we had the first meeting in Washington, D.C. And as they let out the federal framework for health information technology, there were many of us there that recognized the nursing wasn't mentioned. So it was kind of like an immediate reaction like, my goodness, if we're going to talk about putting health information technology throughout the country, we definitely need to have nurses at the table. Because mm -hmm. as you know, nurses are the largest workforce in the United States. And we recognize we had a lot of awareness to bring to that and to get them engaged. So what happened was, is there were some leaders that came together and said, we've got to do something. And out of that came an initiative called TIGER, and we had a meeting at Johns Hopkins School of Nursing, and we set up a vision and a mission, and the first thing we decided was we have to have a summit in which to bring nursing leadership together to really kick this off. So that's what happened. I uh, was privileged to be the chair of that summit, and we had about 120 nursing leaders from around the country in industry, government, education, uh, we engaged funding from the Robert Wood uh, Foundation and other funding sources. Hims was a big supporter. Um, Elsevier has always been a big supporter. And out of that came a 10-year vision and a three-year action plan that really kicked Tiger off. And it was tremendously successful. So let's go back to 2004, those startup yes. days. Well, how would you describe nursing? as it relates to informatics back then? Because I'm kind of guessing that Tiger was designed to also help nurses out. Not only was nursing not mentioned at the table, but I'm betting there was a need in education and curriculum and such in preparing nurses for this new world of Absolutely. informatics. Absolutely. So at that point in time, there was great inconsistency in what curriculums were doing with informatics. There was a recognition we didn't really have a core set of competencies that were being used throughout education, um, as well as uh, even on the practice side, were nurses at the table as they were selecting health information technology? Did they have a voice in the design of it? And so we recognized there was it's almost like we had to get our act together. Yeah. You know, we had to bring nursing leadership together. We had to really make sure that we were making a space for nurses to really grasp technology. And we were very intentional too about curriculum and education and practice. And we knew we had to do it in both places. Mm -hmm. And so we did have Tiger leaders representing all of those spaces. Also part of the summit, we really sought out um, you know, the Emergency Nurse Association, the oncology, and try to get everyone that really represented core nursing practice sure. to be there as well. Yeah. So that was an important part of it. That would be, expanding that group and getting bigger and, and broader engagement. Yeah. So now let's fast forward some okay. 12 years. So what's your assessment of what Tigers accomplished? What's the situation, what's the status of nursing yeah, and the nursing yeah. community today as it relates to informatics? Well, so now 12 years later, Tiger has grown tremendously. This is my little tiger here, but they're really, there's, and, and there's tigers all over the place. That's what's so exciting. So in that period of time, uh, we, after the summit, we launched uh, collaboratives and we took core issues that came out of that summit and we put teams of nurses together and we developed reports, standard and usability, um, um, 
we did uh, reports on uh, virtual um, platforms where we could learn together. We did one on faculty development. What do we need to do for that? I mean, there were several reports that were done. And, um, and then we uh, really moved into um, having uh, to move Tiger into some type of form where it was owned by somebody. Because remember, this was all volunteers, over 1,500 volunteers. And that that point in time is when we really approached Hims and said, "Is there a way we can work together to give some um, to give some structure to Tiger?" We became part of the foundation, mm -hmm. and then uh, in 2015 moved Tiger officially under Hims as a committee. Mm -hmm. So what has happened in that time is it has grown immensely, and two of the hallmark uh, efforts that have happened is we have grown internationally. So tigers, we have tigers all around the world now, um, not just here in the United States and North America. And um, we, we realized we needed to make it interprofessional. So talk a little bit about that intraprofessional or interprofessional uh, approach in terms of how that's changed the way you're working, how you're engaging people differently, and how's yeah. that changed your objectives? So I think the um, objectives are probably pretty similar in that we all want informatics to be core in our practice and to help us Regardless deliver. Regardless of what kind of clinician you are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think that piece is very much the same. Um, and I think what's different is moving out of silos though. So we recognize that it's important to really um, have people on the Tiger Committee that represent not only different disciplines such as, um, you know, beyond nursing, um, and to have physicians, pharmacists, dietitians, different clinicians involved, but also interprofessional as far as public health and different um, expertise like that. Mm -hmm. So it is no longer just a nursing committee. So we've worked hard, we've recruited, we've gotten great. So how are we doing in terms of bringing the other professions great. in? There's a readiness there. You also mentioned uh, the establishment of an international committee in 2012. So where are we? Are there differences in how you engage uh, clinicians in Asia versus Europe or, or North America? So talk a little bit about the international expansion and what your experiences have been there. Sure. Um, and actually the work has really helped us find out what are the differences. So again, when you're in the, when I think we started out in the nursing community, because informatics is global, there was a lot of interest from nurses in other countries of what we were doing. And, um, and so as Tiger grew, we actually formed an inter, in a international like uh, subgroup to begin talking about how we could expand it. And in 2015, it really took off. We had 21 countries that wanted to be part of International Tiger. And they came together and um, they said, you know, this is a global issue. Why should we just do this one country at a time? So we started the Competency Synthesis Project, mm -hmm. and that um, is being uh, led by um, Dr. Ursula Uber out of Germany. 21 countries uh, volunteered, and we did things like develop use cases so we could learn from each other. What are you doing in your country? What are you doing in your country? Um, they, did a, they did an international survey to find out what patterns were in their competencies. And, um, and then are in the process of doing a harmonization table. So in essence, and I just saw this presented, um, their work presented at NI 2016 in Geneva, mm -hmm. the outcome of this. Mm -hmm is now we have a picture of what are the competencies that are needed, which countries are strong and what areas, which are really weak. And our goal now is to move into a globalized informatics competency in that to inform curriculum so we can really start to have a standard, mm -hmm. if you will, around informatics competencies. Sure. Now, do those competencies vary any by scope of practice differences in different parts of the world? I suspect there are, and I don't have the data right in front of me, but there were areas where there were differences. And, I, and um, 
So I think in addition to the competencies, it will help inform what is practice really like in that in that country. Mm -hmm. um, off the top of my head, I can't yeah. remember the details, but um, but I, I also like patterns. what you said in terms of it helped you and and, and Tiger as a, a group learn about yes. differences yes. and all, and and then coming up with this uh, sort of blueprint or mapping of competencies and strengths in some countries, weaknesses in others. How are we aligning, for example, in HIMSS, how are we aligning our educational programming to meet those gaps in terms of competencies? So we're doing um, education, and I think looking at different uh, programs, obviously informatics programs, um, but also out of Tiger, uh, I think one of the benefits was the birth of a virtual learning environment. So we actually have a platform which we can help people uh, um, learn um, and get access to resources to help with those competencies as well. So the virtual learning environment actually is powered by HIMSS and um, you actually can go in and get access to the, the, the project, the synthesis project, but also a lot of other educational material to help really advance so like practice. Webinars or webinars, white papers, papers yeah. uh, recorded uh, presentations, and um, again, it's the whole intention is to increase the competency of clinicians through the Tiger Initiative. Mm -hmm. Now, the the virtual learning environment is is actually absolutely fantastic in terms of being able to provide distance learning because we do events around the world and yes. it's great for people to come to those, but not everybody can. Um, so are we seeing good uptake in terms of the virtual learning uh, environment in terms of people accessing it? Yep, we are. And what's really exciting is now we're seeing, um, we're seeing it being used by organizations as a training tool a training for a for broader competency. group of yes. nurses and, or, or and, other clinicians. Um, and yeah. uh, we've been approached by schools, we've been approached by healthcare systems that say, I don't have, we don't have the bandwidth to do this, you already have the learning platform, how can we work with Tiger to actually, so we have had some pilots go, go on with large healthcare systems. And I think this will continue to grow as organizations um, have to assure their staff that you know, their bedside clinicians um, have to have these competencies as well. And so it's, it's just, it seems like it's so innovative, like someone will use it, then they'll have another idea, then they'll have another idea, and it, it could go a lot of different directions. I think it's very exciting. Excellent. Now for our viewers, not to put you on the spot, but do you know offhand what the address is for them to access the virtual learning environment? So anyone watching, our broadcast here will know where to go because it is mm -hmm. well, it's www.hims.org slash tiger <laughs> perfect and and from there we'll get to the screen from there you'll get to the tiger main uh, the main screen and you can get a link to the VLE um, the other thing too is a lot of great information would encourage everyone to sign up for the tiger newsletter um, that comes out and that has a lot of information of what Tiger is doing, but just excellent educational material. Um, now, is that like, sign up free in terms of the newsletter? Mm -hmm. yep, there's a listserv, newsletters free, and then the access to the VLE is also on that website. Excellent. Have we been able to do any of this in languages other than English? Uh, well, we are taking um, some of the competency work and we are working at starting to translate. That is Excellent. another intention of the international um, group. We've got 21 yes, countries 21 involved, countries. and so they, yes. we're going to have some volunteers who have the language experience yes. to be able to yes. translate this, because that's an important resource um, to be limited only to English right. readers and, and listeners, so that, that, that's yep. excellent. Um, I understand that uh, Tiger recently published an informatics definitions document. Can you share a little bit of information about uh, that document's intention and how to access it? I sure can. Because <laughs> uh, myself and Mary and Ball were the co-chairs of the, the new Tiger committee for the last two years, and that was a major endeavor that we went through with the, with the new interprofessional committee. And we, as we came together as this committee now under HIMSS, one of the things that again the leaders on the committee identified is there's all these different terminologies around informatics 
And so they decided the first collective work they wanted to do together was to come up with uh, health informatics definitions so that it was a resource. And the committee worked on that for about a year and we just recently published it. So it's on the Tiger website. You go and it has common, termin uh, common definitions. It's uh, backed up by links to the sources. So as we're trying to raise that awareness about informatics, Tiger could be another, another source for people to go to and they can use it in their school, they can use it at work, but we do have this common document that we're quite proud of Excellent. now on the Tiger website. Yeah. You know, we're taping this at the Hems Asia Pacific Conference. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell us that's going on out in the Asia Pacific region, more specifically in terms of where we're active, places where we might be looking to uh, expand the activity and get more people involved. What can you tell us about what's going on out in this region? Well, there are several countries in Asia Pacific that are engaged through the, um, you know, through the international work. Australia, New Zealand, um, uh, Japan. There, you know, so there's several. Um, uh, Dr. Paulin Chung, who is from um, Taiwan, has really been kind of like the ringleader for this area. And he is working also very much uh, to engage uh, China. So he's already done some translation of some of the tiger work of China. And I think it continues to be an area where we're, we really want to grow tiger in this specific region in Asia PAC. And we've, we've had some strong uh, tiger leaders that have been with it from really for many, many years. Um, under kind of under his ring I call him the ringleader <laughs> to get more people involved so there is engagement and then we're looking to expand that as well great yeah are you seeing an uptake in the interprofessional engagement in Asia is it still more of a nursing focus yeah, what, what's the I, status of I that would out say here? It's, I would say it's still more nursing focus at this point in time um, and it's it's kind of like uh, technology you know you see it in one place and you go to another area it's almost like watching it happen all over again yeah so I feel like we're kind of there right now getting the nurses really strong and then the interprofessional aspect will probably be a second wave in those countries as and well that's probably a cycle that is yeah. going to repeat itself is that you have a core audience that really gets invested and develops the tools and resources and then you start expanding that circle out yes. to other disciplines yeah. And, yeah. and you'll find that. And then certainly, as you mentioned, in uh, People's Republic of China, language is going to be a significant barrier and challenge. Yep, language yeah. and, um, and finances are two big barriers in that, for that region. Mm -hmm. and when you think about curricula and what uh, is being offered today, um, are we there? in terms of getting informatics firmly embedded in curricula? Are there holes, are there parts of the world where you see a greater need for further development? Sort of wrap us up here in terms of, of where we are in preparing professionals for a career in healthcare, which obviously requires a deep understanding of informatics. Yeah, obviously. Um, I think we have made great progress over the last 12 years. Um, and I think that uh, you know one of our goals was to have it be just integrated and get, kind of get away from teaching one course on informatics. So we certainly have had curriculums that have really embraced it and have looked at it everything from you know simulation to how they teach it throughout their curriculum. I wouldn't say probably across the board that's consistent everywhere, but I think the Tiger Initiative has made a great impact uh, impact in that. And then I think uh, the other thing that's starting to happen, which I think is very exciting, is um, also bringing together practice and the academic settings together in simulation so that we're really starting to bridge that gap as well. I think that'll be another advancement where when Tiger first started, that really wasn't so much so. So we have made progress. That's outstanding. Yeah. It, it really is so important and we all that are close to it understand the very close relationship between clinical practice and informatics and not having that educational preparation in order to, to do our jobs well, utilizing the tools right, that right. Are, are part of, of health care and, and clinical delivery really puts people at a disadvantage. So I congratulate you and the Tiger teams. 
around yeah. the world for really bringing this to all of us, being a part of the HEMS organization. It's a, a wonderful asset for us to have as part of the programs. And so I do, I thank you for all your service in, in making this possible. And we thank you because really, we always say Tiger has a home now and it's been a great relationship. So it'll only go up from here. Excellent. <laughs>